What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the virtual summit here. Sujan Patel from Mailshake. I've got David from Tenbound. Really, really excited to talk to you today because uh, productivity is my, my like hobby. Uh, I just like hate being unproductive and I optimize uh, every part of my element. But anyways, uh, David is the guy to talk to and Tenbound is a company that offers a, a, a slew of training around making your sales folks more productive, just leveling them up. Uh, I believe there's a conference coming up around the corner too, right? Your annual conference. So, uh, David, thank you. And uh, we'll, let, let, tell everybody like what you do in, in, in a more detailed fashion. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me on. I'm excited to dive into this and uh, hopefully everyone will get some value out of it. Um, my name's uh, David Delaney. The company's called Tenbound and we are a research and advisory firm that really focuses on sales development. And so we think that that's a critical department within the company. Um, it's a very hard job and, and um, there hasn't been enough real focus on improving that process uh, that kind of sits between marketing and sales, SDRs, BDRs, however you want to call it. And so we work with companies to do strategy consulting, training, as you mentioned, and we have our big conference coming up um, August 23rd in San Francisco. So if anyone's around, you got to check this out. Uh, really awesome lineup, um, stellar stuff. So let's let's jump in. I want to talk first and foremost about uh, why does productivity matter as a salesperson? Like, what's what's the importance of it? Yeah, you know, I've been really diving into this topic lately, um, and you know, more and more it becomes apparent that we all we really have is time, right? Mm. And, and we have the precious time on the earth. As you get a little bit older, you start to realize like, God, a lot of time has passed. What have I been doing? Um, and we've got time and then we've got our energy, right? And those two things are super precious and we don't really think enough about uh, you know, how to manage those in a way to really drive maximum productivity. Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, Sujin, all this technology has come in that is amazing. And we're, you know, really getting sucked into our, our phone and like all the great stuff that is available to us. And we're not really looking at how is that affecting our time and our energy and how can I take more ownership over to that? So that's definitely, you know, what I want to dive into with you. Yeah, absolutely. I think the thing that comes to mind, like, I guess like maybe I, I, instead of my opinion, I would love to hear yours, the expert. Yeah. Uh, what's the biggest problem in time management? What, what is the biggest productivity suck for a salesperson? Yeah, man. I mean, and it's funny because it's how, how do you define an expert? An expert is like somebody who's made all the mistakes that there are. <laughs> so <laughs> I guess in this res respect, I am kind of an expert. But um, yeah, I mean, pr productivity sucks. I mean, the main thing, and we can dive into, is how are you going into your day? Um, mm -hmm. Like that first couple hours in the morning are so precious. And, and we just kind of, I know I, for one, um, if you haven't really taken deliberate ownership over that, um, you might just wake up, grab your phone, start scrolling through social and, and email, and then all of a sudden, you know, your mind is getting scrambled and, and you start into right at the beginning of the day, what, what they call task switching, mm -hmm. which is so detrimental to trying to um, really be able to get as much out of your time as possible. And with task switching, I mean, it, it's just like it sounds, you're going from task to task very shallowly mm -hmm. and not really diving in deep and, and, and getting into that zone that you need to be to be productive. And so, one thing is really be deliberate about starting your day and then start to be more um, conscious about are you doing task switching because mm -hmm. it's really damaging. Yeah, that makes sense. And so you talked a little bit about, you mentioned deep, getting deeper. Um, I'm assuming, you know, deep work or kind of, I guess, where does the deep depth come in? Why is that important? How, how do you get into that? Yeah, definitely. I mean, and so if, if, um, if you take anything from the webinar, anybody listening, go and Google deep work by a professor named Cal Newport, because he's done a ton of research on this and, um, and, you know, Ted talks and things like that dive into his, his research on this, because when you think about deep work, it's like, those are the times when we can get our most important activities done. 
And in order to get that, that deep concentration, you have to kind of close off a lot of those windows that we have mm -hmm. on. You got to like close off your phone, close off some of the tabs that you have and really go into the focus on the thing that's going to move the needle the most in your job, in your career, in your life. In order to do that, you got to close off some of these other things and not be ping ponging between a hundred different things, which is the natural activity that we do right now. And so really going deep on something is first identifying like as a salesperson, what are two or three of the most important activities that you have to crush on a daily basis in order to be able to hit your number? Okay, you've identified those. And now when I look at my calendar, how am I going to um, really protect my time to go deep on those things, mm -hmm. really deep? So it's like instead of multitasking, you're single tasking those things for a long period of time during your day and, um, and, and dealing with almost shielding yourself from all the other stuff that's coming into that, going deep on those and making that a consistent practice. Absolutely. I, I love that. I, I, if I, I'm a firm believer that the 80, 20 rule, like 20% of what you do is just really what, ma what, what most of your outcome comes from. And it sounds like going deep, taking those distractions, those small little things that could probably have to get to, but not like urgent or immediate or important right now, um, could help you kind of get further. Um, I did when, when, when doing some research before the call or before the, the, the video chat here, um, I, I saw some of your work talking about building momentum and building momentum through the day. Um, can, can we talk about that a little bit? Like, can, can you explain kind of your thoughts on that front? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, and just to recap, I mean, the, you know, looking at deep work, it's like, first of all, the, the prioritization, like finding those big three things, that's the first thing that you want to do because uh -huh. that, that's the goal, right? To go into the deep work, you've got to have, what are the two or three things that are going to make a huge difference in my sales job or my career? And then, and then the next thing is, being deliberate about blocking that time off and shielding yourself from all the stuff that's coming in. I mean, those mm -hmm. two things, like that's your homework right there because that's where you start. Um, and now, you know, looking at um, what, what was it, what was the question that you had? Sorry. Uh, momentum. Momentum. Right. Okay. So at first, at first the, it's, this is actually, this process is, is difficult because a lot of people want your time. They, they need information from you. They, they want to distract you. It's, it's actually a lot easier to get distracted. Like if you start to go into deep work and it's like, um, you know, you're, uh, you're, you're concentrating your focus, you're doing something that's pretty tough. The easiest thing to do is like, let me go scroll Instagram real quick. Boom, yeah. Just went out of deep work. And, but the thing is in order to get momentum, which is what you need to get the snowball effect going you've got to be able to put in the time at the beginning to start that consistent process of really crushing those two or three activities. And then we come back to deep work consistently over time, right? Absolutely. I love that. It sounds so simple, but when you apply this to real life. So I want to talk about the flip side of this. Like what are some, I, I guess like if you're a salesperson, um, that sounds great. How do you build these habits? Like what are some habits you can start to recommend to, to better manage your time? Yeah. I mean, some of the best salespeople that I've met out there, they're not, um, they're not like abrasive or, or jerks or anything like that, but they're very, very restrictive with how they allocate time. Mm -hmm. And they're very restrictive with how they uh, work with their calendar. Yeah. Right? And so um, this, it takes years of practice and, and you have to be able to communicate with people that, you know, my calendar, again, going back, time is all that we have. And there's, there's two or three things that I need to crush on a daily basis in order to make my number. Everything else has to be subordinate to those mm -hmm. two or three things that I'm going deep on. And so, you know, it, it's, um, it, you've got to be pretty tough sometimes with, with, meetings that you don't necessarily have to go to you know there's janie's birthday party that you're not going to be able to participate in um you know there's being being um really communicative with your boss and with other people that um hey i'm holding myself to a very high standard 
I know that these are the things I got to go deep on. And unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to make the, a, a lot of the things that I usually have to go to. And just being, you know, you don't have to be a jerk about it, but you being friendly about that and just explaining, hey, I'm going deep and this is going to be uh, beneficial to the company on the long term. Like, hey, I don't get to go to Janie's birthday party like here in the middle of the day, but we're going to make our number. So which 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 is it? Well, yeah, right. Yeah. I think birthdays come every year. Numbers, well, they have, they have, there's a number for every month, but usually if you don't miss, if you miss a bunch of them, you don't last for the next ones long enough, right? Um, right. <laughs> so that's awesome. So yeah, blocking off time, I love that. Um, and and um, I think another thing you've mentioned somewhere in this is like about the, the doing some of the big tasks uh, and planning up front. You talk about the three tasks and, and maybe doing the, the most important one, the biggest one. Can you, can you talk about like how, I guess, like the, the, the dig, dig into the, like the three tasks or, or the task side of things? Yeah, a, a, few, a few points there. I mean, the, the human brain um, handles threes um, very well. I, can't, I, I've, I heard this from a mentor several years ago, and, and I don't know if it's backed up by research, but I use it all the time. Big three is something that your brain can get around. And mm-hmm. so you, just generally what I found worked for, for me is um, listing things out in three. Like I'm going to have three big priorities today. I'm going to get three important things done. I'm going to have three 90 minute, you know, time blocks that are blocked out on the calendar. And of those three, um, if you've ever heard the expression, eat that frog, right? Yeah. There's a book out there by Brian Tracy. That's great. If you haven't read it, definitely pick it up. So one of, the, one of those three is going to be the worst. There's going to be a bunch of crap on there that you don't want to do, and it just sucks. But if you eat that frog first thing, get it over with, get it done. Hey, the rest of your day is going to look a lot better. So of those big three, do the worst thing first. Um, you know, that's, that's uh, an old adage that I would definitely recommend because it makes the rest of the stuff a lot easier. Absolutely. It's, first of all, I feel like you were spying on me a little bit when, I, when you said that there were three things because I literally do this every day. I have an Evernote doc and it's like the date, three check boxes, predefined for the month, like copy, like the, the, the templates there. And I put in the three things I want to get done. And I start with the big thing and it's ugly. It, it, sometimes it's hard. It, it's, it's the thing I don't want to do. It's the, it's the, I have to do my taxes, you know, type of task. Um, I also like this book called One, The One Thing from uh, Gary Keller. Um, the folks who, you know, William Keller, uh, partner uh, and founder. So that, that's another one. I love Eat That Frog as well. Um, I, I could never get to read that whole book. So I, I ended up getting the Cliff Notes audible version. It, there's like a, it's like a 15 minute version of Eat That Frog. And I'm like, oh God, I'm going to do that. So Awesome. You it's go. like you're reading my mind. Um, okay. So you, you mentioned something that sounds simple uh, as an individual to do, but you've got bosses, management, all those things. Um, how do you, you know, I always get my, my, my partners, my boss coming up with me. Like, I've got the next biggest thing, right? I've got an idea. And I'm like, okay, let me get back to you. Or like sometimes like got the phone call. I got to take it. Right. Uh, how do you kind of manage up? Or how do you tell your boss, your boss's boss, the CEO, whoever, like, hey, back off. I need to go do this stuff. Like, I got to block off time. I can't do that if you're uh, coming to me every two hours with an idea or something yeah, or meetings I mean, or birthdays or whatever. Totally, man. I mean, and, and a lot of this stuff, it's like it is simple, and, and, but it's not easy. And, and, I mean, one of the main things, again, is figuring out those top three priorities. I mean, mm-hmm. that, that right there is tough because mm-hmm. you do have all these conflicting things. And um, just spending some time in a quiet place to really boil down what are going to be those big top three things that are going to get me to where I need to be. I mean, mm-hmm. that's, that's the first thing. So once you have that, you're, you're, you're actually way ahead of a lot of people because yeah. prioritization is hard. And I mean, I'm still working on this every day. But spending the time to get that prioritization. The next thing is being able to communicate that, you know, to your point in a respectful, courteous way to everybody in your life that, Hey, I've spent the time figuring out what are going to be those top priorities that are really going to move the needle 
and they're going to benefit everybody. These are them. And in order to achieve these, I have to have the time to be able to do this. Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, and just role playing a little bit, it's like, no, I love that. This is great. Um, you know, I'm really focused on, I always like to use the word blocking and tackling, um, especially with like, sports people that, that <laughs> get it because blocking and tackling are those fundamental things that get you to be an excellent football player in this case mm -hmm. American football player right but there's probably other other uh, you know um, analogies that you can use but yeah. when you, you you bring it back and you've got look I've done the hard work I've identified these three really really important block and tackling type of things that I need to be doing on a daily basis love your idea it's awesome. I'm going to put it on the list. We're going to keep talking about it. But right now, you know, I've got these. Now, if, and Mr. Boss or Miss, Miss Boss, if you want me to change my priorities and you don't think that these are what I should be doing, 100%, you know, you're the boss and we got to toe the line here. But if you do agree that this is what I need to be doing on a daily basis to hit my number or to achieve my goals, then, you know, we need to negotiate here. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. I think you put it back on them. If you tell them you're kind of reiterating your goal and then that you are actually achieving that goal and reminding them, Oh yeah, there is a goal that maybe supersedes whatever they're about to tell you or um, whatnot in kind of a nice way. So uh, I love that. Uh, I want to switch gears a little bit. So yeah, salesperson, they're, they're grinding away through the day. They're following your rules uh, or principles here more than anything on you know, deep work, blocking time off their calendar, um, focusing on the big things, the big thing in the day, and then the three, you know, things they want to accomplish. And um, so they've got a productive day. Is there anything people can do outside of work? You know, the, the I guess the 16 hours you're not working or, you know, sales, sales people are probably working harder. So 14 hours are not working or whatever. Yeah. I mean, you can use this. That's the beauty of this. I mean, we're talking sales. So there's very specific, you know, tactical and strategic things that you need to be doing to hit your number, right? Mm -hmm. There's prospecting, there's following up, there's presenting, there's product knowledge, industry knowledge. I mean, there's, there's very binary, you know, specific things that you can mm -hmm. put into your priority list as those big three. Great. Mm -hmm. But hey, you got your family, you know, or, or you've got your relationships. You got to take care of those. Otherwise, hey, great, I've made my number and I got all this money, but I'm a lonely, depressed guy in a bar. <laughs> you know, Like that, that sucks. So um, you got to take care of your family and all that stuff. So there's the same process. I mean, there's two or three things that's going to affect how successful you are with your family, spending time with your kids, uh, taking your wife out for dates, uh, doing, you know, fun adventures and stuff like that. There's three big things that you got to be doing there as well. Yeah. And then also with your health. I mean, there's just a uh, five, you know, two or three things that consistently got to be there. You know, you got to eat right. You got to move your body enough. You got to meditate or pray or whatever you could do to make your mind right. Um, you know, that's the same type of stuff. I mean, it's, it's, it's those building block fundamentals. I think really quickly, like something that I've been thinking about is um, we're all kind of, we're set on default mode, right? You get yeah. your advice and stuff and it comes on default mode and you're like, all right, cool. And then after a while, you start to customize it and you dial it in and you get it to work correctly. It's the same with our life. I mean, if you, if you walk through any major American airport, okay, look around at the people like, like, and, and I'm not making any judgment at all, but we're, most of us are on default mode and we're mm -hmm. just kind of like, oh, okay. Like, this is what I have to do every day. And the, like, it's all reactivity mm -hmm. where I think like you could start to break away from the pack is like, getting on customized mode and like yeah. setting all this shit up and, and, and being super deliberate about this. Mm -hmm. That's when you can start to like see some progress in your life. I think. Yeah. I love it. it. It's, it's kind of, you know, getting your mind right prepared for the, 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 the day or whatnot. Right. Uh, yeah. And you said a lot of things I, I want to just kind of add in here. Like I've, I've gone through lots of ups and downs in terms of burning out and, 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 optimizing and, and kind of being in the middle. Um, so lots of customizations from like good or to all the way to the bad side of if, if defaults the middle here. Um, yeah. and, and I would say focus on one thing at a time outside of your outside life. Like 
okay, you want to get your better your relationship. Like what is a big, what is the three big problems you have or the things you have to solve? Oh, it's relationship. Go fix that. Go, go fix. Maybe you don't exercise, eat right. Go fix one of those things. And that might take six months or a while. Right. Um, one of the things for me is like, I, if I have a good morning routine, like everything just falls in place. If I have a really bad, if I just mess that up, my day kind of gets turned around, like I'm behind or whatever. And that starts with like playing with my kid, going to the gym and clearing out my inbox. It's actually the other way around. So it's like, I, I, I have really bad email habits. I want to talk to you about that in a second, but, uh, then I play with my kid for a bit and I go to the gym and then I start work. Right. Um, in order to do that, I have to wake up really freaking early unless I want to start work really late. Uh, that means at the end late and that's a whole other thing. But anyways, uh, that's my personal morning. Figure out what's, what, what's good for you and, and make sure you, you nail that. Cause I think it's, it's a key for a successful day. Yeah, dude. And I mean, Again, like I said, it's two two guys on a webinar. Like, oh, you, you think, uh, like, believe me, this is an ongoing process. You got to reset every, every day and like yeah. try, try to get back on track, back on track. There's the old analogy of a an airline. You know, if they're they're only on track about you know five percent of the time, they're constantly just going back over the route, but they make it all the way to the destination. Mm -hmm. And that's how I kind of feel about this stuff. So it's like, it's a constant improvement and you wake up every day and you have a new, new shot. It's almost like every day is a new life. Mm -hmm. Learn everything you can from the past. We, we really only have the present and then the future is going to be awesome because mm -hmm. we're setting that up. Right. But we really only have right now. And, you know, to your point, like for me, the older that I get, the more sacred the morning is just mm -hmm. having uh, I, I, I'm an early bird. Uh, I always have been, but just having that hour in the morning when it's still dark, um, it's still quiet. Um, you know, there's nobody on Slack. There's nobody pinging me. <laughs> there's no, the kids are asleep. The dog's asleep. Uh, you know, it's, it's that sacred time. And I really, I don't do this every time, but, but I, my, my goal is that that first hour, there's no inbound, you know, reactivity. It's all about me um, designing the day, designing the week, designing my life really. And, and then, um, being really deliberate about how I'm going to execute on that from a priority perspective. And then once I get that on point, you know, get some exercise, be, be quiet for a while, then it's like, okay, let's open it up. The rest of the day can go to absolute, you know, it, it's, it's like yeah. it's explosion, but at least I have that morning. Nice. I love it. Yeah. I love that. Um, early risers. So like, I think, uh, I've got a very similar mindset. It's awesome to hear. Um, all right. One last question. Um, big one, maybe big one. Um, but it is for me, I guess, email habits. Like what are some, some good email habits? Cause I feel salespeople and, and everybody in general can just get trapped in there. Right. Big time. I mean, and, and, um, especially, Going the entrepreneurial route um, in the last couple of years, it, it, you're, you're, you know, you, you're pulled in a lot of different directions. Your time is, is very valuable even during that period. And so I, I look at email in two ways. <laughs> One is either, um, is this going to make me money or is it going to get me in trouble? Um, <laughs> so that's pretty much what it's been boiled down to. Um, and, and so, um, you know, that's kind of how I look at it. And so the money makers are going to be the, the people, you know, the, the people and events that um, uh, there's some momentum again, we've got something rolling, we're doing, we're going to be talking, we're building a relationship, we're going to be helping. And, and that type of thing, we've got to move that that's super high priority. Is it going to get me in trouble? Is it something from the IRS? Is it the California tax board? Is it, um, you know, I forgot something and I dropped the ball, you know, and, and um, you know, something, something went wrong with, with some situation. And I kind of just star those and keep those at the top until they're taken care of. And then um, everything else, you know, may or may not get responded to. And, um, you know, definitely like from a, outbound prospecting perspective for someone like me, I mean, I, I've got two or three pain points 
um, running a small business, managing people, bringing the money in, um, allocating resources correctly. Um, I've got two, I'm a persona, right? Um, mm -hmm. I've got two or three pain points that, hey, if your cold email comes in and you're touching on something that I need help with and is causing me pain, I'm probably going to star that one. And, mm -hmm. and that's a moneymaker. Right? Yeah. Um, uh, if I don't star it, you know, you may not hear back from me because there's only so many hours in a day and I got to just put one, the emails in one of those two buckets. Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, kind of reminds me of like, uh, you know, your, your best customers, your best, your biggest chance to fill your, close your pipeline or meet your numbers is closing your existing pipeline, right? Like you can go find new deals, but you're starting from the stop. You're starting from the top. Like you got it in inbox. Maybe there's deals there. Does it make you money? I love it. Does it make you money or does it get you in trouble? Uh, I love that. I, if I, if I, I'm going to go check my inbox tomorrow morning using that logic, I guarantee I'm just like, gonna, I use like, I just archive it or like uh, send, uh, snooze it for a bit. But anyways, um, David, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Um, looks like we have a lot of common, common theories and practices and, and productivity. Um, and thank you for sharing. I hope you listeners out there are going to take one or two things away from this. I know there's a lot of stuff you can do. David pretty much said, change your life around, be more productive and, and do it one step at a time. But um, I hope you guys take at least one and try to do this. And then if that works, take the other, take the other, take the other. Um, David, where can people find you? Um, and if they want to get, learn more about what you do. Well, yeah, I mean, definitely come to the conference in a couple of weeks. It's um, August 23rd in San Francisco, 500 sales development professionals. And uh, we're going to be talking all things sales development. It's an awesome networking opportunity um, over uh, online, 10bound.com forward slash conference. And, um, you know, happy to meet everybody. If, if you can't make it, just happy to help. So, hey, thanks for having me on the show, man. My pleasure. Uh, all right. Take care.